Hi, I'm Antonio Caldeira at Jasper. Let's talk about the low power verification app. In today's power optimization world, we see um, a lot of complexity has been added to the design because of new structures and new behaviors due to power. To verify these new, um, these new structures and behaviors, the challenge has been increasing a lot. Because of that, we have created the low power verification app which uses Jasper formal exhaustive proof techniques to, um, to help you in the low power verification aspects of your design. The low power verification app takes the RTL and the power intent described in either UPF or CPF to create a power aware netlist. Together with that, it also creates functional assertions and structural checks from the RTL with the UPF or CPF. With those, you can have a baseline for verification of the low power functionality of your design. Together with that, you can use Jasper formal exhaustive proof to ensure that the power architecture itself did not break any of the design functionality. Together with the, uh, with the RTL and the UPF, you may also use user-defined assertions that can be reused from previous verification that you have done or you, or you can create more on the fly. And you can use these together with our formal property verification app. More than that, you can also use um, any of our or other formal verification applications, uh, such as connectivity, CSR, security, and so forth, with the low power context. Let's take a look at the CSR uh, example. The CSR usually has a standard interface, either AHP or OCP, uh, or something else, or some proprietary interface that can be used. The key is that you verify first um, that the functionality of the CSR block works without power. So first, the control and status registry is sitting on always on domain, and that any transactions that come into the design uh, uh, from whatever other power states are valid at any times. So for, for instance, we may, we may look at the, uh, the, the possible data reads from a register and make sure that the data, data integrity is there. After we introduce power, we need to ensure that data integrity is there, not only when all blocks are on, but also through all the possible uh, power state transitions. For example, if we take a look at the switch block, you'll see that first, in the always on space, we ensure that the data integrity is there. Then when we have the different power domains injected to design the power transformation, we need to make sure that that functionality is intact. For example, uh, one hazard that could come along is that the path between one block and another is now crossing a domain. So you need to make sure that the information that's being transmitted doesn't get corrupted because of the absence of power. Another one that's important is that the boundaries between collapsible and always on domains need to be um, isolated properly. That means having the isolation in the proper places and also that the isolation clamp values are correct. A third one is that uh, you need to define the power, the power domains themselves, the power idols, in the correct spaces so that you don't put a block that's supposed to be on in the domain that goes off. If we take a look at one of our current customers for the low power verification app, uh, they were creating a communications device, a system, uh, device, a system on chip device that was being used uh, on different platforms by different applications. They had already ran PowerWare simulation, but because the PowerWare simulation was run late in the design cycle, they were concerned that it was incomplete and there could still be bugs there. So we used the low power verification app first to make sure that we didn't miss any bugs from the design in the, in the simulation. And then to ensure that it was in, fa in fact comprehensive and, and no design functionality was broken. We found, however, some new bugs there. And uh, the Jasper formal, uh, uh, formal technology exposed uh, a few bugs that were due to power in that design. The first type of bugs were that the, uh, the, the default isolation clamps were not correct. They were not consistent with the design expectations. And that's a power architecture bug. The second one is that uh, when powering down some of their blocks, the, uh, the reset logic was being corrupted. The reset values coming out of a CSR block 
was, uh, was corrupted and then the flops would be started on, the, on an unexpected initial state and will also cause loss of functionality. Because of that, they gained a lot of confidence on the correctness of their design when uh, using the power context. In summary, the uh, low power verification app enables you to exhaustively verify that the low power uh, introduction, the power intent introduction on your design did not break any of its functionality. And this is done first by uh, creating automatic checks and assertions from the power intent and then using your own uh, user-defined assertions to ensure that no new hazards have been introduced, no new, new bugs have been introduced uh, by the power itself. Any data that's generated from the low power verification app can and should be uh, um, leveraged in our other um, Jasper applications, such as formal property verification. For more information, please visit our, our website to find our, our white paper. Uh, you can also find more information on, on the DVCon 2013 uh, proceedings. Uh, if you look for the Jasper Low Power Tutorial. And more information is also on our, our website and also by email. Thank you.